Uh, believe it or not, I was a therapist before. Get out of here. I went to, I yeah. I didn't know I, that. I, yeah. so you couldn't have just told everybody that? You just got to use me as the, 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 oh, the but, visual? Dude, but, look but, at this. But your hair, Chuck, really, you, you needed help. He just likes to be always stoned. <laughs> uh, I, one so, time I went my there. My brother is your hairdresser. <laughs> I think I'm going to call an audible. We'll do whatever he's going to do, but yeah. I think this is goodbye. All right, are we good, Taylor? All right, we're good, folks. Uh, we are we are coming in hot uh, and without a net. This doesn't look like your normal episode of the way I heard it because it's not. Uh, joining me today, my business partner, Mary Sullivan, with the Farrah Fawcett hair. That'll become relevant in a moment. The producer you know, his <laughs> his name is Chuck Klausmeyer. And uh, I, guess, I guess maybe a promise made is a debt unpaid. And on the podcast not too long ago, I swore to get my old childhood friend, Chuck, a proper haircut. And to do that, to do that, Mary has pulled some strings. As you may have noticed, Mary's hair is sort of a, a diabolical combination of Farrah Fawcett and Jane Fonda. We travel a lot. Everywhere we go, people stop to talk about Mary's hair. That's Dennis. Hi, Dennis. Hi. <laughs> Dennis is a what you call a professional hairdresser, and he's been doing your hair for... Many oh, years. Yeah, a long time. Many, long many time. years. Like, yeah. give me, like, five, six, ten. Ten, ten years. At least ten. Yeah. At least ten years. Yeah. And typically, just so you know what that entails, Dennis comes to Mary's home. Or I go to the salon. It sometimes you go to the salon. Yeah. And when you come to her home, Dennis, there's normally wine or whiskey or something involved, certainly. Oh, everything you wish. Uh, in, <laughs> I love going to her house because is, uh, I get... Fed, I get uh, you get fed. <laughs> you get all the yeah. alcohol. All the alcohol and you need. Friends, friends come over. It becomes okay. like, friends. And yeah. It's a party. It's a hair party. Okay. So anyway, look, a couple. One other thing, not to bog this down with too much exposition, but the MicroWorks Foundation is officially starting a new work ethic scholarship program. Application period at the end of February, and finally, finally, after trying to do this for I don't even know how many years now cosmetology is going to be one of the vocations that we're going to be paying people for. So that's super cool. It's all coming together now. So you couldn't have just told everybody that? You just got to use me as the, 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 oh, the but, visual? Dude, but, look at but, this. But your hair, Chuck, really, you, you needed help. You looked, <laughs> He's been you telling look... me for years to grow it to my ass. <laughs> and he did it. Yeah, but and he did you it. looked like Howard Hughes. Not in the, not the good years? Not, not the early days. I thought it would be fun. Um, as we bear witness to a hairdresser to the stars, and I'm Dennis, I'm going to talk to you in a moment about some of the details of your remarkable life. I, I just thought it would be interesting to try and have a conversation about Chuck's contribution to our modest enterprise while Dennis performs something like a miracle so that our friend Chuck uh, is no longer arrested for vagrancy on his on, on on his way to the office. One time, just one time. <laughs> Dennis, what are you going to do to him? Walk us through it, just you know, for, like like we're civilians who have never seen this yeah. sort of thing happen before. To begin with, I would like to talk about the color and the density of the hair. Color. Chuck has really beautiful hair. Sure. Very medium fine hair, a lot of it, and he grew his. All haircut out to this now. <laughs> the color wise, um, he's got back of his hair, he's on a level four, which is a dark medium brown. Mm -hmm. And as we can see it here, that's all natural. We're trying to do bring some of this color in very thin pieces around his head. Mm. So that's gonna look like like 10 to 12 years ago when it just started to go <laughs> so shiny. <laughs> 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 so that's what we are trying to do. Haircut wise, um, I love uh, his uh, face shape. It's a very oval shape. This is one of the best shapes you can ever have. Why? And, uh, Why is oval good? Because every haircut, what you do as a hairdresser, he's going to make it look good mm. through his face shape. Mm. He's got high cheekbones, nice jawline, a good. His face is um, 
perfect. <laughs> yeah, almost, oh, almost. Almost. Okay. Oh, sorry. Almost. Okay. Let's let's stay here. <laughs> this is this is easy, easy. Yeah. Is what what is what I like about it is is divided to three very even pieces: the forehead, mid face, and the jaw. It's really good because I can put layers around his face. I can bring this a little bit more. It's going to look a little bit more up to date. So that's why with the color. <laughs> Up to the, date. Yeah. So you're like from the caveman all the way to it's wherever we are now. It's a little bit too much now. grown out. A little what, bit. Yeah. A little bit. Okay, <laughs> yes, great. That's, and with the foils, we are trying to do very fine pieces, as you can see here, diagonal like this. We're going to go around the head and feel on the top. So that's going to be more of a natural look, not a very high-end fashion look. Is it possible <laughs> for you to work as you talk? Because yeah. this is only an hour show, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's 24 hours. Okay. Yeah. But, but if it all goes as planned, how long is it going to take to put the foil in the hair to facilitate the transfer of the aforementioned color from the back to the front and so forth? Yeah. That's going to be like 15 minutes. 15, uh, perfect. Perfect. Does he do this to you at your house when he comes over? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So there's <laughs> coloring? It takes a little bit longer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I got a lot of hair, so yeah. You have so, I mean, honestly, it is, um, it's tiresome traveling with you anymore it, it it i mean you know i i, I i'm happy for you but I'm, you it i mean everywhere now everywhere Every, anytime somebody comes up to compliment my hair you get you get a little tweaked well what i like to do is pretend they're talking to me i know you do. because they're normally like your hair is unbelievable and i'll say it's just a, it's just a little thing i do it's a simple rinse <laughs> You know, it's just he does, like, and, you, and you should see the looks on their rain. face. It's like, well, no, no, no. Your hair's nice too. <laughs> but oh, she, Mary, we could get, you, uh, she does have the hair. I know. It's, I mean, she makes the hairdresser's life a little bit easier, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Because it falls almost that way. Keep working, then. <laughs> <laughs> what? Um, you heard the part where he said he got annoyed at people. <laughs> how long up. have you been cutting hair, Dennis? Actually, this is now professionally. 23 years, 22 years, 23 years. And you cut famous people's hair? Yeah, I have a lot of stars that I work on. And any you can mention? I don't want you to betray any confidences, but um, you want to drop some names? Yeah, pretty, not names, but uh, the very, on daily basis on TV. No, TV stars. And he TV goes and stars, he does, he uh, does fashion. Um, Keep working, Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's good to remind <laughs> He goes and does a lot of fashion stuff. He's yeah. constantly getting hired to do weddings. I was like, Dennis, can you come do my hair? Oh, I'm in, you know, I'm in Mexico. I'm in Dubai. I'm in Switzerland. <laughs> it's like, Wait, Dubai well, is one of the most uh, fashionable, is in fashion to get married now and destination where it's like Dubai. Mm -hmm. So I get hired, the last October I got hired for a prince to go to Dubai and do his, do his, his wife, his I don't know if you know about the the Prince of Middle Dubai, Eastern. The, the, everybody's prince there. Yeah, everybody's a prince of Dubai. Princes. Yeah, a lot of princes. Yeah, are, I mean, uh, prince and princess. There's a lot, a lot of them. And he wanted to. He had 18 people interviewed, and I don't know why. And I was very lucky. He took me, and it was very, very interesting. It was his third wife that he was adding into this. I, I think they call it a harem. Yeah, that, I kind of. I didn't want to say that, but <laughs> <laughs> but it is. <laughs> How did the first two wives feel about that? Uh, they're very, you know, if you're if you don't know it any other way, yeah, they were invited at the wedding too. I mean, I didn't do the hair, but uh, yeah, it was very interesting. I also have a, a, another prince comes from uh, Dubai every year. He stays in Beverly Hills. He comes with four wives. All of them at the same hotel. They have like 26 children. Everybody comes. I'll do the wife's hair. He hires me because they are they got covered outside. So I'm the only one who can see them, touch them, you know, do the hair and talk to them. That's kind of amazing. And I mean, really, four wives, 26 kids. They come to Beverly Hills. Dennis goes over and everybody gets. And for sure, I can done. tell you the name, but they're very. Well-known people, they go shopping here, mm -hmm. and um, they go back home after a month. It's a very kind of different type of a lifestyle that um, we don't basically understand it as well, you know, because it's a totally different lifestyle. 
but uh, it's very interesting and I love it, especially when I get hired to go for a week. There's a whole week is wedding in Dubai. That's very, very interesting. How important is it to be able to, to talk and carry on an interesting conversation as a hairdresser? Because I mean, like when I think of every time I'm on the phone with you and you're home and he's cutting your hair, he's talking while I'm talking. And you're <laughs> like, I don't know who anybody's talking to, but it's like, you know, there's Dennis, this. Dennis like, is a good talker. Yeah. He's got, he's got great stories. Do Keeps you, you amused. Do you share things? with him when you're getting your hair cut? Is it like being in a bar? You oh, know, yeah, a... yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's, he's kind of like a bartender. It's very confidential what yeah, he tells yeah, you. Yeah, so no, he's not going to tell you any of it. No, I'm not going to pry. I don't want to make it weird, but I just, I've, I've, I've always thought good, good bartenders, uh, like good hairdressers, have a little bit of the psychiatrist oh, in yeah. them. True. You know, they can listen. Well, yeah. I believe, Dennis, what, what was your previous occupation? Uh, believe it or not, I was a therapist before. Get out of here. I went to. <laughs> I didn't yeah, know I, that. Yeah, I was in. I, I was born and raised in Germany, and I went to Switzerland to school. And I came home one day, and I said, "I want to be a hairdresser." My dad said, "No, there's no way. I paid so much for your schooling. You're going to go back to school right away." So a week later, <laughs> I went back to school, and I stayed for eight years in school. <laughs> and where? In Switzerland, and in Germany. So. After I had my license, I worked for four years. This is just not my job. <laughs> I mean, it's just very interesting, amazing? very amazing that, that you can help people in a different way. But uh, speaking of helping people, uh, you want yeah, to keep, keep working going. there while you talk there. Good, good it's man. not a. It's an hour it's, show. It's not. <laughs> it's not a. Uh, it's not. It's not my type of a job in that direction. It helps me now, mm -hmm. uh, with my now job a lot it's very very interesting that's interesting like our foundation helps people in the skilled trades and a Absolutely. lot of the stories we hear are parents that want their kids to go to college i highly recommend just yeah. to take those classes yeah. too yeah. you know as a uh, to communication classes mm -hmm. body um, language yeah. all of that is very very important for a hairdresser to know all about it body language is important for yeah. a hairdresser yeah absolutely the the you know, the lady comes sit in the salon like this. She tells you totally different thing that her body tells you. Oh, you're, so you're... She's not very comfortable, you know. So her legs are crossed, her arms are crossed, and <laughs> based on that... That's a different story. Well, We go for that in a different story. But if you come to me, your body language and your, your, your speaking language has to, to match. Like, uh, like Mary, you know, she's always when she talks, her body language is as classy as she talks. So that's kind of a lady that I like to go for. Did you say classy or classless? I, I couldn't. Class. Classy. Classy. Okay. Yeah. We do have that too. Yeah. You know, we do have that too. So don't. <laughs> so to sum up, you went to college for what? How many years? Eight. Eight years? Eight. To be a psychiatrist. I did my master's too in hair. And in the U.S. you don't have master's, unfortunately. But in, you, uh, in, in Germany, in Switzerland, Austria... And two other countries, I think it's uh, uh, Italy too, or Spain. Mm -hmm. You do need a license. Uh, you have to be a master in order to open a salon. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you cannot open a salon. Or, and you get, uh, there's a higher uh, education level for hairdressing, basically. So in this country, right, you, you need a certification. Right. But you don't need a, you don't need a four-year degree. <clears throat> which I believe is, that's correct, yes. Right. Yeah, you go only six months to school, you get your license. And that's why I'm, 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 I highly, highly recommend for people who want to be in cosmetology a business or run this business, they need to have that communication, everything about it. Because the school here, I did my license here too. Mm -hmm. The school here basically passes you over the border and give you a license. This is not really learning. You know, everything what you do, you have, you have to help yourself learn everything through um, books, internet, people, you know. But you have to do it too, right? Like you have, I mean, there's no substitute for Absolutely. actually doing yeah. the work. Even yeah. if you're natural, you have to go through it. So were you an apprentice for a time? Yeah, three and a half years. Uh, and what was, what was it like working as an apprentice in the hair? Every year business? you go to a different section. You start with washing hair, knowing about the scalp, hair, dentistry, 
and then goes to colors, like what highlights you can do, what kind of, like what I said here, like um, about this face shape, what face shape is, exists, what's the best face shape, what's the best color for someone. So that's how you basically learn those three years. But it's, you really go a little bit more deeper, like mm -hmm. how do I damage really hair? How can I go with a bleach as far as I can go so the hair doesn't really break, but still can work with it? It's a little bit on the deeper level. So, I mean, do you, do you think of yourself as a, as, a, as a tradesman, as an artist, as a worker, as every an entrepreneur? Every artist. Every hairdresser, you have to have an artistic eye and, and level of thinking. Mm. It's not just the person comes to cutting hair. You know, you want to make sure that they, they have the most best experience. And that starts with you and your personality. If you have personality issues as a hairdresser, you have to fix those first. <laughs> what kind of living can you make? I mean, I would imagine it's all over the board. You're, you're somewhere near the top of the profession. Yeah. I, mean, I don't want to pry, but I mean, can you make, if you're a, if you're a good stylist working in, you know, an average town in the country, do you have a shot at making Absolutely. six figures? You can make this six figures a year? I'm sorry, what? Six figures, like $100,000 or more? Way more. Way, way more? Yeah. <laughs> Almost double. Hey, Chuck. Oh, wow. Yeah. You know, wait a minute, no, no, that. wait, wait. Six, double six figures is 12 figures. No, <laughs> no I mean, double the 100,000, that's <laughs> what I mean. <laughs> this guy can make a billion, make a billion dollars a year, folks. It's just, I'm in the wrong line of work. Hey, Chuck. Everyone is going to be a hairdresser now. <laughs> I have something yep. to fall back on. How did you meet him, Mary? How did Dennis come waltzing into your fabulous life? You were, I remember that. You were on Montana at a, a different salon when I first met you. Lux and, Lab. I was working at yeah. the Lux Lab salon. And it's a very high-end salon in Montana. You yeah. know, it's a very fashionable. And it's like, it's a ridiculously expensive. I have to say it that should be too. said that when Dennis says Montana, he's referring to a street, street here in Santa, Santa Monica. Monica. Yeah, not in not the big Montana giant Avenue. state and the no, great Montana Northwest. Montana Avenue. Right, right. Um, in they have auctions at uh, my kid's school, mm -hmm. and we, yeah, you bid on stuff. And so I bid to get, I think, a haircut at the time. Um, and she bought out. the most, you know, that, that school was having an auction for a good cause. And Mary had one of, um, and I, one of my clients was running that um, auction, and she goes like, Dennis, I would love you to help me with this if you can donate anything for your haircuts or for your hair color. Um, that I can do this, it would be for a good cause. This package is a $500 package, you know, I'm like, oh, that's good. <laughs> so I'll take that, I'll do that. So, and Mary bought the most expensive one and uh, she came to me, as soon as she walked in, I, you know, she, she's a gorgeous woman, you know? So I'm like, oh, damn, this is a Dennis client. <laughs> 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 oh, I fell in love with one, two, three. I swear. And she goes, she gave me a free hand. What woman comes into the salon like this and oh, gives you an open hand? She goes like, for some reason, I trust you. <laughs> you I'm let like, him Whoa. do whatever he wanted to do with your hair? I don't believe that. It was, it was very specific what you have to do. She had already this, the job done. Yeah. She was there to continue. Oh. So, but he helped on give color that, and yeah. And she was basically so helping the school. She had a hairdresser, if, you were, if I'm very honest, you know? Yeah, she was just wanted to help school. the school this and came back reason. to me for that one time to use that, uh, uh, whatever she bought. Now, you can see why I stayed with Dennis, right? Oh, well, I mean... Oh, no. He's yeah. amazing. It is, it's, it's like <laughs> because entertainment. Because I fell in love. <laughs> <laughs> it's, inter it's entertainment as I well as a haircut. I can't stare at Chuck. I can't look him in the <laughs> face when this is happening. <laughs> I, I just don't even know how to, like some sort of fright wig ran into a TV antenna. You know, <laughs> but you know, something he said on our recent trip um, to Switzerland, you got your haircut. My last haircut was in Switzerland, yeah. And oh. um, that guy was very, you can tell people over there, like the guides, I mean, any of them, they, they really take things seriously. Yeah. And um, yeah, you had your hair cut. And well, a few I, other things done. I had some, yeah, suddenly I, I, I was going to be filming something the next day and I literally caught my reflection in the window of some store and I, I looked 
well, I look terrible. And this guy gave me a trim and we got to talking. And yeah, the, I mean, the, the love for the craft, you know, and that's a couple years ago. I think you were with me too. We were in Nashville and I got another haircut on the road and I, I talked to the woman who cut my hair and she, she had three jobs. So she was cutting hair in this salon and then she was going uptown and working at another salon. So she had two chairs that she was renting and then she was a hostess at some local restaurant. And I, I just, I was like, you know, like the work ethic, it, it has nothing to do with the vocation. It's just her choice. And, and I asked her the same questions I asked the guys in Zurich, you know, why do you love it? What's it mean to do this? And, you know, the answers, Dennis, tell me if I'm like, like you always know how you're doing. You get immediate feedback. You get appreciation. You get gratitude. You get a sense to, you know, ply your skill. Absolutely. Day after day after day. So I just figured, you know, people love doing it way more than I ever thought about. So why not, you know, why not help train the next generation of Dennis's? But Dennis, he had something else done to, there. Yeah. You have to be, um, you have to be made for this work. This is obviously everything comes to hundred percent, your techniques and your personality and what you put in. So 50% of this work is technique. The other 50% is you, how you sell things. Mm. So you need to be a little, you cannot be that shy person that it was in the, that that's not going to do it. You can do it, but that's, you're not going to be very successful. So he, he, he's you basic, have to be a little bit up there. Form and function, all things. Yeah, about. and this is a job, is in, is in fashion. So every three to four months, every season, everything changes again. So you got to make sure, to, I, like I go to a lot of fashion weeks, all the way to Milan, to London, everywhere. So just to update myself. And that's what you need to be willing to do, to spend the money. To make money, you basically have to spend money. This is it's all about. Can I quote you on that? <laughs> to make money you have to spend money yeah yeah well we're spending a fortune to get this done right so you're welcome you're welcome i'll show you my check <laughs> <laughs> he's promised to take me to a fashion week yeah and the fashion week is very very interesting you meet a lot of people i meet my best friends who i'm traveling next uh, summer with in new york last year i meet this uh, the, the four guys, they came from Australia. Mm -hmm. You know, we became friends in the fashion week. You like, exchange things. Basically, there are part of you that you're saying in a different type, different, uh, uh, different world. They work in totally a different environment, totally different weather, totally different language. It's very, very, very interesting. I can't even, you know, I mean, for me, like fashion has been... Really? <laughs> I got to I got to send it. Laura. Mary's documenting this. Yeah. To, yeah. Um yeah, I I I don't think much about like Dirty Jobs, the show I worked on was not a show about fashion. It was mm -hmm. just a show about grime and slime and overtime and stuff. But uh again, I can't look at you, man. I can't I I, can't <laughs> I, I don't blame her at all. It gets more beautiful and more beautiful. You know what? We actually do need to take a break. Are you about done yeah, with the done. placing this? We're done. Okay. And it just rinses out. All right, so let's do that. Let's let that sit a second. We'll throw to a commercial, I guess. Does that sound good to you? Like we throw to a commercial? You want to do that? Yeah, uh, sure. Yeah. Poor Chuck. He's trying to produce the podcast while it's he's impossible. sitting there. I can't hear how any... I can only go by what I'm looking at, and I don't have my glasses on, so... Oh, what could possibly go wrong? Nothing. I don't know that anybody's ever had their hair cut on yeah. a podcast before. Never seen this on Rogan. No. No, 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 no definitely no. not. And, and you won't if you've seen Joe. <laughs> well no. you can cut jamie's hair maybe no know? haircuts for him um dennis how are you feeling it looks like the color is already uh i see a difference mm -hmm. yeah the first part of the uh, process is here done we did some low lights very fine low lights on both sides what now can you do something with this cowlick yeah, yeah, it looks like he looks like uh, pebbles in the Flintstones. This is only a haircut today. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a surgical oh. moving part no. or okay. calic. Uh, good to know. Like good to today, know. Right? I read book. the brochure wrong. <laughs> but but he did do you a favor. He didn't like do the yeah. the top color, so it'll grow out. So you're yeah. natural. Yeah, I was going to explain that too. That's thank you for that. So um, I left the uh, 
the, the top part of his hair out and did the lowlights vertical in between. So when it grows out, so we, he will have a perfect, very natural wash out. You will never have to reduce if you don't want to. But I think you are very much hooked. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You're gonna love yeah. this look. He starts right here with me, so I'm, I, I come in every yeah. four he weeks. You, yeah, he got you yeah. back the first yeah. days. So, so what you're saying is that, like, if I didn't want to have color again, yeah. it would you don't, be. If you don't want to maintain this, people won't be able to tell that I had it. Colored. Nobody, not right. even your partner. This mm. is like very, very so. natural. And how long is it going to take from now to finish cutting his hair? About twenty minutes. Oh, perfect. Good. Fifteen to twenty minutes. I can do it faster or longer. However, you need it, but typically about like 15 to 20 minutes. About the haircut, I sectioned it very nice, it's her natural part, as you can see. So I like to section uh, my haircuts, <laughs> the bottom part and the mine. top part. Yeah, this, really this is very nice. long here. So we're gonna really try to take this much off of his hair. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna start with a razor cut, not with a scissors cut yeah oh, because that's, that's going to create Why? a very rough kind of a little bit look because you don't you're not that type of a person that you get up in the morning and blow dry your hair and style your hair you kind of get out of the shower and kind of like a wash and go type of a guy have you been watching me <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> and it just got weird <laughs> well, it was weird a lot longer before this Mary. a lot longer before this all right well you start cutting dennis and as you cut I think Mary will just going to call. I think this has got to be a bonus episode, mm -hmm. the more I think about it. And I think we'll call it What the Chuck. Because okay. obviously, Chuck's the center of attention, even if he is flinching now, as that razor flicks remarkably <laughs> close to all those important veins <laughs> oh my. in his neck. The good thing about this razor, it doesn't cut this way. It only cuts this way and with the hair. It doesn't cut the skin. What? I don't, the what? You just dragged the blade across your... Yeah, hand. it doesn't it really do anything. Yeah, <laughs> what are I you know. doing? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't do. It doesn't cut this way. It has a guard. Yeah. Look. Wow. Don't die. Ah. Ah. Yeah. No, it has a guard. Nothing gonna happen. <laughs> We're gonna He's try a, that on YouTube. I know. <laughs> He's a witch. <laughs> <laughs> what did you just call me? <laughs> Sorry. I'm an artist, not a witch. <laughs> Why does he work for us, Mary? How did this happen? How did my friend from literally the 10th grade from 1978 wind up sitting in our office getting a haircut from a hairdresser to the stars who you've known for 10 how does this work well he didn't he didn't start working for us you started hiring him every time we would get some sort of a gig as a freelancer yeah, yeah. yeah. um what was the first one that he did was it ford kimberly clark oh kimberly clark was that, for, was that first so. i think it was yeah with the shop towels Okay. Right. He basically dressed up as a janitor yeah. of sorts as I was uh, going on that campaign to get people to uh, throw out their those those red shop towels, which were filled with all mm. sorts of uh, deposits True. and heavy metals to go for disposable shop towels. That's the one where you got uh, boycotted. I was boycotted, yeah. Yeah. You wrote, uh, you hate cry bullies, something like that? The people in the textile industry right. who are yeah. responsible for laundering shop towels along with like napkins and linens from hotels and tablecloths from restaurants, they took exception to the fact that I was involved in a campaign that implied somewhat implicitly that uh, those freshly laundered shop towels were still contaminated with yep. all kinds of heavy metals. So yeah, I, they. I forgot. It was a all funny. It was a funny Facebook post. I refer people back to that occasionally just to Cry show bullies. them what your sense of humor is and <laughs> how you'll how you'll go on the attack. <laughs> well, it wasn't funny. I mean, these guys and, and Chuck. Sorry, this had nothing to do with you, but you you know, as a result of that shoot, uh huh. You know, I was. Uh, they boycotted Ford. They they th threatened to yeah this union invited all of their members to boycott Ford, Wrangler, um, Caterpillar products, stop watching yeah. dirty jobs. I mean, they were yeah. really, they were upset. Yeah, yeah so you, uh, you talked about how you hated bullies, you talked about how you hated crybabies, and you basically 
coined the phrase cry bully for them. <laughs> it was really... <laughs> and what happened after that was they ended up pulling the... Uh, they pulled the call for the boycott, and I yeah. I heard the guy who, who ran the organization was, I don't know, relocated or, or yeah. something. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, Chuck, new that, employment. that was... Uh, that, that was the that first, was the first time we worked. I here. think that was the first one, and then Caterpillar was not far after that. Or I, I could have that backwards, but I don't think so. I think it was Kimberly Clark with the shop towels, and we were shooting them in the the trash cans. And there was one. I, I have a picture in my house that you gave me uh, that said ninety seven years of combined experience or something like that. <laughs> and uh, it was uh, of the two of us sitting at a lunch table, and I'm eating a sandwich, and the shop towel is in my mouth, like it's mm-hmm. like it's coming out of the sandwich you know the point being that if you're wiping your hands with a shop towel and then you're eating your lunch you're getting the heavy metals you're getting everything in the shop towel in yep. into your body that, that that was pretty inflammatory now that i think about it <laughs> that i mean we funny. really <laughs> but yeah what yeah a- and 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 so it began what was after that ford uh caterpillar i think was next and then i don't know i think ford one of my one of my favorite ones was ford um remember when you and mike this never aired but um oh, right. mike oh, was yeah. on the ford floor and you came in as an elf who was looking for a ride for your boss my boss right. we never acknowledged who it was but it wasn't he was like dressed up like an elf yeah he was, i was dressed yeah. as an elf yeah. and you just played it everything. straight that yeah. was the funniest as he took you around and I remember one of the lines was something about, uh, you're talking about horsepower, and he's like, wow, I'm not used to yeah. horses. Yeah, yeah. He's a big guy, needs lots of room. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, those were funny, man. Oh, but... yeah. Where do, you, where do you put the reindeer, I think is the question yeah. I asked. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, why didn't that air? That was funny. I know, it was great. It was I, it, Maybe it was online, I don't, I don't remember, but I don't remember seeing it. We'll have to see if we can dig that I up think, somewhere. I think you, you said, hey, I want to do this. You know, I want to do this. Yeah, it was here. very spontaneous. And uh, because we were doing something else, I, I was, uh, I don't but, know what I was actually hired to do, but you were like, let's do a, let's do a commercial like this. That's right. It, it was definitely not planned. And that may have been, was that the time where you were, every, everybody was being really careful? Yeah. You remember oh, that? yeah. Oh, we were in like <clears throat> we an old like Apple a, store. It looked yeah. like, yeah. And, okay. um, and you were trying right, to lighten okay. things up. I was desperate to lighten it up. It was so funny, you know, that, I mean, that was a great run. That was a great time, but it's so weird just because, you know, as the stakes get higher and you start spending a bunch of money and people get nervous, but it's the, it's the exact opposite of what should happen, you yeah. know, because nobody wants to see nervous people and a bunch of actors all being just nervous. So really <laughs> like the antidote to that whole uptight thing was to dress Chuck like crumpet or some yeah. other elf, mm-hmm. and just have him come in shopping with a straight face. Yeah, you're you're actually really good at that. I remember listening in my earphones because while everybody's being really cautious and you know everybody's kind of uptight, you're sitting there with a real person talking to them about the car. Yeah, and you just started animating the scene in front of you, and it was hysterical. And you had the person laughing so that they weren't affected by how uptight everybody was. Well, that's Dirty Jobs One Hundred and One. You know. Yeah. Um, production is the enemy of authenticity. You have to have it, otherwise you don't have a commercial or a show, but if you suddenly let the people who are in charge actually be in charge, then all the rest of us mere mortals seize up and start doing fake stuff, and then in the end, you need an elf to walk through the whole thing and kick the tires, and you know. But at some point, you hired him. At some point, you actually came to me and said we should. He wasn't, you weren't working with us when you did the Nevada stuff, right? Correct. It was after that. Yeah, that was that, so that actually was my favorite. Oh, yeah. That was, that all came about, I think, because you did the work with your mom and dad on. On Viva. Viva, yeah. On Viva Paper Towels. And um, the same guy who brought that actually. Oh, Doug, right. Yeah. And uh, we decided, it was before you had Freddie. And it was like, he doesn't. He doesn't have a dog, and it was a flea product. And this might be too inside baseball, but what we're talking about. So there's this big Swiss company called Novartis, who makes drugs and pharmaceuticals, but they also make flea and tick collar <laughs> products. 
And they wanted to know if I wanted to do some campaign. And Mary and I were like, oh, God, that, that sounds horrible. I don't even have a dog, really. It's a bit of a stretch. But then, I don't know how it, there was wine involved. And we started kicking yeah. stuff back and forth. Was it your idea originally? I, originally, yeah, to, to dress him up as a, a dog. It turned out it was a Bernese Mountain Dog. Bernese Mountain Dog, yeah. And then we yeah. all sat around a table and basically did the odd couple where you're the dirty jobs guy. He yeah. is a Bernie's mountain dog that is persnickety and comes down with, you know, fleas, fleas. and freaks out. But right. yeah, we wrote, uh, it was six webisodes. I think we did. Yeah. I don't remember if it's four or six, but it was we several did half hours. I mean, it was basically a full on sitcom, but then you did, um, the courtship of Eddie's father, the, the music you recreated the words so i mean that was hysterical yeah w when it finally came together it was like okay my best friend dresses as a dog so he becomes my metaphorical best friend and then my best friend it's like the corollary in real life would be he gets crabs right he gets some <laughs> some sort of sexually transmitted glass, problem please. that that would really be awkward to talk about yeah. You know, it's something that would be really embarrassing to a human, but what's the corollary to a dog? Fleas. Yeah. So then it was like, well, wait a minute. If he's Felix Unger from The Odd Couple, he would be mortified if he had crabs, and the dog version of Felix would be mortified if he had fleas. So then we have the construct of The Odd Couple, but he's my best friend, so we had to take the song from The Courtship of Eddie's Father. Sing a few bars, Chuck, would you? People, let me tell you about my best friend. So suddenly, best friends in real life are making a commercial <laughs> campaign for a pharmaceutical company, and one of them is dressed as a Bernice Mountain Dog infected with fleas, and that's the theme song, and I'm throwing yeah. Frisbees, and he's chasing them, and we're playing <laughs> chess. And oh, the, doorbell the doorbell rings. Door, that was my door, 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 <laughs> door. <laughs> that was funny. It was. There was a lot of fun. There was a lot of. You know, we we ended up. We kept the rights to that because it was so much fun and so funny. We kept thinking we got to do more of these. That'd be a great. Well, Although we promised for? not to dress you up as a dog in what was it like a hundred degrees out in the valley. We were shooting yeah, we, in we August. We talked about this in the yeah. first episode of, of this year. With, you know where. Deegan saved my life by, yeah. you know, getting the yeah. NASCAR suit. Michael Deegan, producer extraordinaire, got the NASCAR cooling suit to put on my best friend. So the giant fur Bernese mountain dog suit infested with the aforementioned fleas wouldn't lead to dehydration and sudden death. Uh, True. And it didn't. So Chuck is still alive. And then do you hire, do, when yeah. do you come to me and say, we should actually think about pulling him in to this world? Well, well, we were talking about doing a lot more stuff where, you know, social media, all of that. And, um, yeah. Well, as I recall, it was the idea for the podcast. And I came on originally to help write the podcast, which is kind of Oh, that's of funny. right. Yeah, yeah. But, that's um, right. I forgot the podcast yeah. was originally. But were we paying I, him for that? Were we <laughs> actually well, paying him? Well, I, st I, st I, I you, worked you were, for about you were six or seven months. No, no, before he ever put me on the payroll, I, I came in and tossed stuff around. Yeah. You know, and then. Yeah, I think he just yeah, got sick of basically every time he would call you, <laughs> you would just be a way raise to make work. money being your friend. <laughs> because we've been tossing stuff around since you were 16. Yeah, yeah. I know. And it's like, wait, how, when did I start paying him? No, I used to do this for free. <laughs> right. right. Like, how did, yeah. how did this happen? Now, now, yeah. so you get free haircuts, free everything. I mean, unbelievable. This is great. Are you kidding me? <laughs> You yeah. didn't tell me that. But the funny, <laughs> the funniest. You did that. Oh, free? No, it's just, it's just like that. The haircut's over. And there's no more safety guard on the razor. <laughs> and that's but how the, it but the, but the funniest thing was that Chuck had never been in office. It didn't really occur to any of us here. Yeah, oh, my God. God. And uh, the learning curve, let's just say, was... A steep. right angle? <laughs> yeah. Dennis, just so you know, my friend... Chuck here, whose right. whose hair, whose famous hair you're cutting, uh, has been on Broadway. Oh, oh my God! He's been really? uh, he he's starred in major motion pictures. He's oh. written films. He's starred in plays. He's done countless commercials. I mean, he's not the most famous head you've ever shorn, but uh, he's probably more famous than best. you think. What's one what? of the best hair qualities I have usually. Seriously, Re really. 
How would you rate Chuck's hair compared to the average celebrity? Um, between on a scale of um, one and ten, he's definitely on a seven, half, eight. Well, very nice. Really so good uh, hair quality. C plus, B minus. I mean, the quality starts with the hair on the top. So, who's who's got the best hair of any celebrity you've ever seen? I like um, I like um, Cindy Crawford's hair a lot. Yeah. Yeah, great hair. I mm -hmm. think Kamala Harris has beautiful hair too. Mm -hmm. It's just a lot of work. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, sure. That's uh... so many things to say. <laughs> Listen to the sound of me not saying any of the things I want to say, Mary. <laughs> and you're welcome. <laughs> You're all welcome. He, remember when he started in the office? Like you, you didn't have, know how to use our uh, telephone, uh, computers. It was uh, well, and then Jade came in and was like, "And why did we do well, this? Why did we hire yeah. him? Who is this yeah. guy?" It was d truly, yeah, yeah. Jade for, thought I was a waste of food for sure. <laughs> did. And may still to this day. I'm not sure. Food has never been wasted like in your changed. presence. A waste of food. <laughs> That's so rough. <laughs> but then, of course, for whatever reasons, we do hire him, and then we go on to Six Degrees, and that, I think, is probably where all of your many hat-wearing talents yes. and, that, and, that was a good one. and limitations came, came, came <laughs> crashing together. No. My, my favorite on that one was Igor. 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 Yeah. It's pronounced Igor. Is, is it? <laughs> How many characters did you play? I never counted them up, but it was about 40, I think. Yeah. I Elton can't. John. Yeah. It was yeah. not, not El quite 50. As a baby. Yeah. It was hysterical. Yeah. It's a great series. We're going to get that. We're going to get more of those episodes. So you say. Uh, but folks, if you're, if you're trying to imagine in your mind's eye, Chuck Klausmeyer wearing a diaper, dressed <laughs> as a baby Elton John, <laughs> singing, <laughs> was it like Rocket Man or... Uh, <laughs> No, no, I didn't sing anything. No, I just... typed it out on a little piano. Wah, 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 wah. It was oh, yeah. a oh, yeah. crocodile Oh, rock. right. Yeah. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. Oh, God. Anyway, for that and, uh, and all the other reasons, the least we can do is, uh, is get you a decent haircut. And Dennis, uh, am I imagining things or is it starting to come together? It's starting to come together. Oh, look at this. So wow. now you can see on uh, what I was uh, explaining earlier, the hair was too long. So you couldn't see he re really the best features of his face, which is now that, uh, the high cheekbones, cheekbones? here. Mm -hmm. So you can see that it complements a lot more. So this line continues on the sides. So it makes it more, more like... Interesting. Uh, interesting, more face. And his forehead, the sides you can see, has got great for it. it's not too big it's not too little so it comes perfectly out now so perfect he said more. he used the word perfect yeah yeah it, it is actually it is you have a perfect <laughs> word he doesn't, he doesn't get those words here no a lot no. <laughs> mm -mm. No. No. we're talking about his features yeah. <laughs> and his benefits <laughs> <laughs> who cuts your hair dennis i uh, believe it or not i have a hairdresser that um he doesn't know that i'm a hairdresser no really yeah he is just a type of a guy. Um, you cannot make an appointment. He works in downtown LA. He's not the fanciest place. You go there, stay in line. And um, one time, he just he just likes to be always stoned. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> one so time I went my there. My brother is your hairdresser. <laughs> <laughs> one time I went there, and then I sat like an hour in line, and then I see he's so stoned. I'm like, I'll be right back. Yeah, I'm somebody like this. <laughs> So, for a bit. But he's a really true artist and you know he works he connects in a different world with different stuff, then he makes the hack and it's a very weird way of to express yourself uh, and show your work. You know. Um, just example between me and him, um, he's an artist too, but in a on a different level. Mm. You know, he is uh, he does whatever he thinks is right, which is the right way to do. But uh, through the new modern technology with the, with the techniques, and it needs to be combined. But he goes only with his feelings. You know, one good haircut is divided to 250, uh, 250% of your feelings and the technique. So the combination of Probably that... Probably some scissors and... Uh, the technique, yeah. yeah. tools, too. Yeah. That's yeah. part of the technique. Uh, that, that's yeah. part of the technique, yeah. Um, and um, that makes a whole haircut. 
the feeling, but he does only feeling. The problem with that is if I go back to him, I say a month ago, I was here for a haircut. On that day, he had that feeling, he did that haircut. So two days, a different feeling <laughs> with a different <laughs> looks. <laughs> That's the only problem with it, which if hairdressers do half feeling, half technique, if you combine, you can always grab back. Why, <laughs> why haven't you told him? That you're a hairdresser. It, it makes hairdressers always very nervous for some reason. You know, mm, when, if you're a doctor going to a surgery, you're like, look, I do the same surgery as you do. <laughs> so you better, you know. Yeah, so, but you're going to be unconscious when that, I do that's it. That's different. So that's a little bit, yeah. <laughs> you know. That's the same with makes, lawyers. It makes someone nervous, <laughs> you know. If I do the job as you do and I come to your office like, look. I do the same thing as you do. You're going to be like a little bit like, okay, why are you here? Right. <laughs> you right. know, so why don't you? I don't like to go to the, any. Obviously, I work in a salon that 20 people work. I don't want to go to anybody else. So I also, I like myself to go to different places just to wash my hair, to get a different feel of how hairdressers in town do this, what you do. So just to see, get a, get a different uh, aspect of it. Keep cutting as I ask you questions. We are uh, done. Oh, you're done? <laughs> We're almost done, yeah. You're almost done? <laughs> almost done, yeah. Um, Not going to change very much anymore <laughs> if you're looking for more change. Can we say wow. where you work? Which salon? Yeah. Do you get, which one is it? I work in a few different salons, but the main salon is a Daydon salon on Wilshire between Sentinella and Franklin in Santa Monica. Okay. But you'll also obviously do house calls. Yeah. Beautiful Mary is one of my beautiful house calls. <laughs> really I love is. doing for Mary house call. I mean, <laughs> it's so perfect. <laughs> Why? What's it like over there? I tell you in one sentence. Yeah. You get paid for having fun. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. I'll have Laura over, our yeah. business manager. Yeah. 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 She's a she's now a regular client. Oh, she client. introduced me to one of her. You know, she built me a lot. You know, with her friends, with her. A uh, close family. I just you call know? it a wine party, and they so all come. So let me come. ask you something, Dennis. <laughs> on, I, honestly, I think there are a lot of people listening right now who are really, you know, just trying to make sense of, you know, what a haircut ought to cost, and and why, and like how it all goes. Like my hair was cut for almost twenty years by a guy named Frank who flew a bomber in the Korean War. Oh my God. Right. It charged seven dollars, and I got to sit around <laughs> with some other guys, you know, and we looked at naughty magazines and told bad jokes. And then, you know, he was, sometimes he would cut my ear because his hands shook a little. You know, he was very old, but I really liked the guy. And you know, my thought was, ah, you know, it's going to grow back, and it, it it doesn't look so bad, and whatever. But how do you, like, you're at the top of the game. You're like, literally, you're here in Beverly Hills. You've got some of the yeah. most expensive and Famous clients and kings and princes with all their wives coming around the world to see you. How do you just think about a regular old haircut for a regular person? What's it? Make it sense for me. <laughs> Depends with what kind of clientele you work in. You go to always their level. We have some high end clientele that you go to with a prince. You know, you go on that level. We have normal people coming to the salon with only budget. Mm -hmm. I work with budgets too. I had a mm -hmm. wedding that they said, look, we have only uh, $25,000 for this wedding. Mm -hmm. So what can you do? I said, I'll do it for free for you. <laughs> really? Yeah, I did that for free because they were just out of college. They were sweetheart, um, blah, 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 16. Yeah, he does that all the time. So that's and, why, that's why um, you like I yeah. wanted to give him, you know, because um, that 500, I wanted to, cause you know what, that have $500, what you want to give me, I give it as a gift for you for your wedding gift. That's sweet. I'll do yeah. it free and it's all good. So I, I do a lot of stuff like that too. So we go always where the clientele is. If you have a but you kind of have to have this personality to match yourself on that level where the client is, you know? I do, you know, and I, and I saw it. Did you read that thing I posted the other day? I got a shoe shine. Oh yeah. Yeah. At SFO. Mm -hmm. And it was it was not a busy day. It was a Friday. <clears throat> and so the guy's out. He's out of the way. There's no foot traffic, really, which you kind of need if you run a shoe shine. But I went back, and he was shining a kid's shoes. And the kid had, like, I don't know, like this rubber around the leather. The, all, the ugliest shoes I've ever seen. But the guy was really working to make them look good. And I was waiting my turn. And 
when they finally got done, the kid said, oh, this is so much better. How much do I owe you? And the guy said, uh, are you still in school? And he said, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm 17. He goes, okay, well, no charge for you, but come back sometime later when you have a job. Yeah. And that just made me want to, well, it made me do, it made me want to do what I did, write a story about him and, and you know, because you every now an and then, tip? Dennis, right, well, yeah, you got to give it away. You've got to always remember what goes around comes around. Mm-hmm. So you do a good thing, something good is going to happen to you. So that's why I'm doing this. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't hold your a charity case? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, you could have, no, I found out. Good, I, I do it for the good cause. <laughs> I found out that my kid was going to him and like didn't tell me. He never told me. And finally I showed him like, what do you, it's like, oh, he's so cute. And he just, he came Your in. Son? And he, yeah, he needed his haircut. Your son <laughs> went to Dennis to get a haircut. <laughs> he didn't know. <laughs> that was the funniest thing ever. I think he just thought I had an account or something, and it's like Dennis never said anything. I so you didn't went, charge him? No. no. <laughs> I mean, she I charged him. you later. I, I paid him later, but he didn't tell oh, me. Oh, even if you don't, she give, she pays. I mean, if, even if I want to do a thing, I mean, she appreciates you so much. You go, you go there, and I mean, and I'm sorry, but she tell. She pays you, overpays you on top of it. She, she tips you, you know. She makes sure you come back. <laughs> she's really just have to have the a perfect, chat. she's the perfect thing I ever claim with every address. So I'm like, I'll do anytime, whatever you need. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what's a, annoying for me as a guy who's getting a little light on the top here. I got Taylor, who you can't, Taylor, let me see your hair again. Yeah. Taylor. You know what? Stick your head in front of the camera for a minute. This is just, <laughs> look at this head of hair, yeah. right? Look at yeah. that guy. That's a good one. Yeah. It's, a, it's, it's a great head of hair. Chuck's got a great head of hair. Mary's freakish Farrah Fawcett hair. Yeah. And everybody who, who works with and, and for me. Jade's got great hair, Jade's too. Jade's got great hair. Amazing. Incredible hair. Ashley's got great Nate hair. Great hair. Yeah. Libby's got good hair. Yeah. Sherry has amazing hair. Oh, oh yeah. 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 A lot of red hair. Yeah. I, that might have come Mary's out. kids. <laughs> Mary's got amazing. Fantastic hair. I'm sure. Fantastic yeah. hair. Yeah. <laughs> I guess hairy people are attracted to me. We are very lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Chuck, how are you feeling? I keep I see you stealing looks in the mirror there. I mean, what I see looks pretty good. I mean We are almost done. I I wanna just do the sides a little bit more lighter. Well let me ask you something. Do, do like is this does, is this haircut designed for a part? It doesn't it? have any part. Nothing. You can part it this way, this way. This is part. So of I just get this out of the shower and I just do this. And like I told you in the beginning, wash yeah. and go. Wash and go. You just wash it, dry it, comb the way you want it. It's going to stay this way. I just like Mary, uh, she figured out very well. She goes like, his hair is great for layering. That's very true. Yeah. But it, it lays very well. You said I was asking for layers. So that was very good. It was keeping me up at night. It was asking so so well. Some yes. questions. That's yeah. a that's a that's a bad thing if your hair keeps you up. Yes, <laughs> it is a bad thing. Um, I should remind people our uh, work ethic scholarship program uh, is officially open as of the first of March, and uh, we're now offering cosmetology. Uh, I no, can't. It's it's February twenty eighth. Yeah. Well, what's the difference? Two days. Yeah. In a leap year. Oh, is there? Is this leap year? Yes. All right. All right, well, in spite of the fact that I've been corrected again uh, on my own program, uh, we are, we've got, uh, I hesitate to say the wrong number, but it's at least a million dollars, right, Mary? Yeah, probably closer to two. All right, so we're going to have a couple million dollars that we're going to be awarding in work ethics scholarships. And uh, Dennis, you don't qualify. I'm sorry. You already have a job. I'm so, sorry. <laughs> so no money for you. Uh, but uh, I can help out whatever <laughs> people need. Well, I Questions mean. Questions or anything. So what, 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 what do people need to do in California to get their certification? People in California need to go to the cosmetology.gov mm-hmm. and uh, there's our forms. First thing you really need to figure out if you are really a hairdresser, I recommend highly to find out what really your passion is. Because a lot of people, what I notice, especially in California, in Los Angeles, go after things when they don't find anything else, they think, oh, cutting hair, that's actually very easy. I'm going to, go, I'm going to be a hairdresser. Yeah. But you really have to be with heart and soul a hairdresser, not just cutting hair. We are cutting hair, not just cutting. 
Does it make sense? <laughs> yes, you, uh, yes, it, yes does. it actually does. Yeah, Robert people. Frost. We have hairdressers mm -hmm. who mm -hmm. cut, and they have hairdressers who cut hair. So there's a big difference in between. So be the hairdresser who cuts hair, not just cutting hair. You must love what you do. With heart and soul, you got to be thinking about. You need to do whatever it makes you and needs to make you happy. And one thing that is very important, you have to see the end product right in the front. Like I, when I saw Chuck today, actually a few days before, so I thought about like, okay, what is my best features here? How can I bring this more out? What is the most important things? What else he doesn't like? What is it? Some people like, oh, I don't like my head to be in my face. I don't like the side part. I don't like to be in that side. So in his case, he was about his hair very easy and let me do whatever I thought to do. And he just said one thing, he likes it on the longish. Mm. Well, it's it's, and, it, it's still long, but, yeah. but it's but it not Howard good. Hughes long. Yeah, yeah. It looks, this is and great. Now you can and see I, his I face. Love the, I love the color that you put in because it's just oh, enough this is like to make so it. I mean, look yeah. at this. No one you will know. Even, no yeah. one will know. Well, yeah. Anyone who listens grow. to this <laughs> might know. Um, <laughs> you can see it here. <laughs> you how we how we worked here. Yeah. You see. But but the overall effect is darker. Yeah. Yeah. Without being obvious, I went uh, half a shade darker than on his natural tone, just because of that reason. When he shampoos his next time, it's going to wash out the overpigmentation of the color. That's going to wash out, and it's going to be just the perfect color. Where are you going next? What? Where in the world? Any exotic trips? Are you back to Dubai? Yeah, I'm going to Switzerland on the uh, in February. And in March, I'm going to Germany for a wedding. I'm booked for a wedding in Hamburg, Germany. Are you kidding? What a life! You're, what a life you're living. I mean, this your it's trade. It's a very beautiful life, but it, it requires a lot of organizing, and you got to find what you really love. So I added the traveling into it, so it doesn't get too boring for me. You know, in my haircut, my last haircut in Zurich. Mm -hmm. which I really enjoyed. They did a thing. I had they 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 took uh, black warm wax and they stuck oh. it on no There's my nose <laughs> they, they do it in the ears though too the yeah. guy said they I do, said we do it in the ears yeah. yeah but they this they they pulled this stuff out of my nose man oh, i and know you I, jumped I, on the I, chair i just i pooped straight up my back yeah. it was just the the, it, the, the q-tips they looked like little porcupine all the hair oh. in my nose is gone oh. yeah in a second for a while <laughs> well i mean it's still gone maybe it'll grow back probably thicker than ever but Whatever. I mean, I, do you provide that service? As no, well? I don't. No. Okay. Well, it's, it's, it's important <laughs> to ask. I don't know that. what's on the menu. <laughs> okay. On the menu is cutting hair. Yeah. That's it. Cut I do color. makeup too. Okay. And that's a different part of my job. When I came to US, I used to work for Playboy magazine. Did you? Yeah. For um, if you sit online, the 2003 and 2004, the the Christmas girls. There's uh, twelve black girls and one blonde one that I create. That's my look. Hmm, what? Plus makeup and hair. You did all of them? Yeah. And I was, when I, I, that's how I come to US. I was working for uh, Playboy magazine in uh, South Africa in Cape Town for four years. And then they needed someone in California. So, and I wanted to go to Australia first, but that didn't work out. And because they, they needed six months of a, <laughs> Uh, background check and I didn't work out for I said I want I need a job right now so the US was open so I came to New York I did never like it I loved it to visit it but I never worked because it was cold January 6th it was January 6th it was very cold they forgot you know I hate to say that but uh, I come from a country that everything is like like to a second very much organized so when i came to us i'm like Whoa. they forgot about me at the airport <laughs> <laughs> i mean that's how organized they were for four hours i just i died so i started not to like new york very much but i was there for six months and then another nine months in san francisco that was really fun too where did you work in san francisco and San Francisco, and of course, all the, way, all the men are. <laughs> it was very Castro area. It was very good. It was a very... Yeah, in the Castro. It was a, yeah. it was a very men-oriented salon. Mm. I, I felt very comfortable. It was very, very fun. It was very good. But in those salons, it's just a, about the experience you do. That's another thing that I wanted to tell you, too. If you become a hairdresser, it, it's the worst thing to, to work in one salon till you die. You move need to around. move around yeah. for the first 15 years. 
every mm-hmm. five years. You know, different environment, different clientele. You're not different leaving LA. No, no, no. Sorry, this no. is my base. <laughs> you panic. always have a base. You always have a base. In my case, I'm the old dog now in this job. This is like this. You can't. Uh, this is my base. That's my home. So wherever you go, you go for a month, but you come back. But Dennis, this is another thing we kind of preach in the foundation. It's not just enough to learn a skill, and it's not just to. It's not just enough to love the skill you learn. You have to be willing to go where the work is. And the minute you get too comfortable or too complacent, you ought to be willing to travel. Right? It happens very quick and very fast because yeah. the clientele, what you when you work in a salon, that comes always, you see the money is flowing. So why would you go? Right. But it's very important for your own grow, your skills grow, your personality. You need to build up your whole personality. If you want to be really successful, that's what you need to do. How many languages do you speak? Uh, <laughs> for, for some of us from Europe, only four, but uh, my it's sister only speaks. Four. Only four. That's, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's what I asked the guys in Zurich. One guy said four, one guy said six. Yeah. Which, which languages? Uh, my first language is German because I was born and raised in Germany. Mm-hmm. My second language is as good, uh, is the same level. Um, with writing and reading is Farsi, which is uh, the Persians speak Farsi, mm-hmm. the Middle East and Iran, because my parents are Persian. And uh, my English is okay. I get along. Um, I get. I'm very comfortable. So far, so good. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, not like the big, but it's okay. Oh, it's okay. Basically, mm-hmm. it's fine. And Italian. So, you know, Italian is like my. It's like English. So I get away. Good. How do you say? Uh, my name is Dennis, and I just cut Chuck Klaus Meyer's hair. In German. In German. Ich heiße Dennis. Und ich habe heute Chucks Hair geschnitten und es schaut oh. sehr gut aus. Geschnitten. Geschnitten means I cut it. I see. Uh, how do you say the same thing in Farsi? Mein Esmam. Mein Esmam, Dennis. Und ich, ich bin zu German. Und Emrus Moe Chucko Zalam Kechele Rashang Schode. It sounds very different. It sounds very different. Yeah, very different. I love the sound. Yeah. yeah. And in Italian? <laughs> Il nome Dennis, io cantavo dei capelli de Chuck. Uh, <laughs> mi piace. <laughs> io ti amo. <laughs> mi piace. Oh, well rounded. I love it. Um, well, his hair looks fabulous. Yes, and if you want to see it, right, we're going to put up a before and after, right, on YouTube. Oh, we'll on put, your YouTube you know, are page. you kidding? I'm going to put this on Facebook, YouTube. I'm putting this everywhere. I would like to style it now. I, I need a hair dryer. Oh, okay. oh, you have a hair dryer? Dry and yeah, we have, have a hair dryer. Do we have a hair dryer? Oh, you have a hair dryer? Yeah, I have yeah. everything. Okay. I just oh, need to bring it. And some products I can style it to see what Product. you want. Products? Yeah. It but, looks great. Yeah. Okay. But if, you have a, if you're going to, to be on somewhere, do you like it like that where it is? Do you want me to okay. style it? No, do, style yeah. it. do the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. I think do we should the do the whole thing. thing. No, no, the whole ball of wax. Now we have it. We might as well. Yeah. I'll be right back. No, you take your time. All right. I'll go somewhere else and just like we'll shut it down so when he comes back it's gone <laughs> and he won't even know or we did a podcast or what we do is while he's gone we shave your head bald totally <laughs> we got all this stuff <laughs> here we could do it we could do it and when he Look. comes back he'll be like <gasps> what happened I'm really afraid to yeah, right, don't, look, you don't know how to I think I'm gonna call that. an audible we'll do whatever he's gonna do but yeah. I think this is goodbye right yeah. yeah it is how long have we been talking an hour and whatever. Plenty. plenty. All right. Yeah. All right. Uh, folks, uh, quick reminder, um, Work Ethic Scholarship Program is uh, probably up and running at this point as of March 1st. Cosmetology is on the menu along with uh, veterinary sciences. And we have uh, uh, something with computers, computers too that's brand yeah. new, right? Computer technology, yeah. 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 So, and there's another one too. I'm blanking. Well, go to microworks.org. You can see what's available. Uh, we got a couple million bucks we're giving away in Work Ethic Scholarships. Uh, Dennis is about to plug in a hair dryer, which means the podcast is coming to an end, but not before. I can only thank you in one language, my friend, but thank you very much for taking care of Mary Sullivan's amazing locks. And now my friend Chuck Taylor's next on the list, you know, if you ever get another haircut and, um, and who knows, maybe me too. Really, thank you for coming I by. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to be here. And I thank you and thank you and thank you. Oh, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you, Dennis. All right, folks. Hope you liked it, whatever that was.
we'll be back next week with whatever this is. If you like what you heard, and even if you don't, oh, won't you please, won't you please, pretty please, pretty please, please subscribe. Well, I hate to beg and I hate to plead, but please, pretty freaking please, please subscribe.